Hello, this is Adele Stan of Alternet.org, reporting for Free Speech TV from the Take Back the American Dream Conference in Washington, D.C. And I'm pleased to have with me Dr. Jim Horner, who is the Low County Coordinator for the Rebuild the Dream uh, effort. And uh, he's going to uh, give us a sense of what the Low County is, what the Low Country is. Thank you. Well, the Low Country really is the Hilton Head, uh, Beaufort, Bluffton, Jasper County region of, of South Carolina. Oh, and, uh, yeah, and we have already over 60 members uh, in this new council and just going with great guns. Uh, and uh, there are three of these councils in, in South Carolina. I think we're probably the biggest at this point in time. Now, you're a longtime educator, Professor Emeritus from Virginia Tech, uh, and you were basically teaching teachers and superintendents and principals how to, how to better educate students. What is the implication of this attack on government for our education system? Well, okay. Yes, I have spent 27 years as a professor at Virginia Tech and, of course, was a public school teacher and, and, and all that in the past. This is a great conference that we have here. Uh, their issues and what they're all about is just terrific, and hopefully we'll go back and really make things happen. However, I would like to see education be the number one pillar. If you read uh, t Tom Friedman's great book, uh, That Used to Be Us, you'll find that the number one pillar of his five pillars for success of this country is education. And if you look at the latest figures in education coming out of the Department of Labor, only about 10% uh, or less of the jobs can be held with a high school right. diploma. We know that 65 to 75% of the jobs require post-secondary preparation beyond high school but less than baccalaureate. And only about 25, 26 percent of all the jobs in this country require bachelors or above. That includes medical doctors, et cetera. So we've got to change and have at least 60 to 70 percent of our young people right out of high school going to these great technical and community colleges in this country. Well, how, how do we, A, do that, and how do we stem the tide of high school dropouts, which is a huge issue? Well. <laughs> That's my next book that I plan to write, to be real honest with you. We've got to connect education to reality. You nor I ever go to school anymore unless we see a reason to do it. Right, it's become almost a vocational right. thing. Yeah, so, so we have got to get our young people seeing the need to get prepared for the future. If you will, envision education as a train in community. Uh, that, that's a train traveling through that people get on and off as they need. You, you get on and you stay a length of time and get prepared for your first job. Then you get off and you go out there, but you got to come back. It's lifelong learning. But don't, we, but don't we have to somehow prepare the ground get to, to get public support in very hard times from people to allocate more resources to education and, 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 and now that it's being couched as sort of this, you know, uh, trough for public workers, right? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how, do, how do we build that public support for education? It's truly a cultural change. I was fortunate to do a faculty exchange uh, with a university in England and while there I went to Germany and many other countries. And in Germany, educators are held in high esteem. Why we don't hold educators here in high esteem? We've got to change the cultural mindset, if you will, the importance of learning and the importance of those who are the facilitators of learning. So that kind of is where uh, Vans uh, talk about creating a new narrative and telling stories is exactly. really important, right? Exactly right. We've got to get the I personally think we have to go to the universities, those who are the institutions that manufacture our educators, if you will, huh? the makers of educators. Right. That book's not been written, I've been thinking of writing it, but it's the getting the universities to provide the, the, the facilitators of learning that this country needs in order to move forward and take back the American dream. Well, give me a sense of, in, the, in our last few seconds, of the practical efforts that your, um, your low country folks are making just to get involved in the Rebuild the Dream um, effort and the American Dream movement. Are you having house meetings? Are you uh, 
convening in some way or talking online? How are you doing it? Well, we are convening. We, we've already had two marches on, on Congressman Wilson's office in Beaufort. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we just held on the tw 26th of last month our first big organizational house party, if you will, and had a nice turnout for that and let them know of the contract for the American Dream and went over the various uh, issues that are there. And our, our viewers can go to that contract at the rebuildthedream.org uh, webpage. Yes, I'm not a political person. I'm an issues person, and that's how I got involved, was through a house party. That's, we're only t about two months old. Oh, so you were never involved in politics before oh, this? No. no, no, no. I've been an educator all my life, a carpenter, uh, uh, woodworker, furniture maker, violin maker, you know, that sort of stuff, and then a professor. But uh, I have found this dream so fascinating and so challenging that I... Uh, I've done what I could to lead and get started this new Low Country American Dream Council. Well, thank you so much for coming by, Dr. Jim Horner, with the Rebuild the Dream effort and the American Dream movement. And I am Adele Stan of Alternet.org, reporting for Free Speech TV for the, from the Take Back the American Dream Conference in Washington, D.C. Thank you. Thank you.